Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions and today I'd like to talk to you about how to interface remote I.O. or remote devices to the MV Advanced using the Modbus Communications Protocol. For those unfamiliar with Modbus, it's essentially what English is to machines. It's kind of a common language that devices can talk to each other and is supported by many different power meters, remote I.O. systems, data acquisition systems. And in this case today I'm going to have the MV Advanced talking to the MW100 or DAC Master data acquisition system. So for those uh, unfamiliar with the MV Advanced, here's a kind of a little picture of it over here. It uh, comes in two models, a five and a half inch version that has a display on it. It can record locally to a compact flash. And it also comes in a bigger unit, a 10.4 inch unit here. that uh, Bigger display, compact flash, buttons for interfacing with it can be fully configured on the unit or remotely using software. So let's get rid of that guy and get into the heart of configuring the MV Advance to use the MW100 via Modbus Communications. So right now the unit's up and running and in order to configure it you're going to have to stop it so you can kind of get deeper into the menu structure to make some changes. So right now it's currently running. I have actually have pre-configured it to bring in four points of data from the MW100 and in this case uh, I'm bringing in a temperature and then the other three points here are just not configured. So I'll grab the thermocouple quickly and we should see a uh, hopefully a rise in that 76.1 which is my office temperature here. And We can see that it's doing a pretty good job of bringing in that remote temperature input from the MW100. So I'm going to hit the start stop button to stop memory and math and then I'm going to hit the display enter key to select that memory and math and what we should do is we should see that it goes ahead and stops the unit. Then I'm going to press the menu key. This is going to take me to the first level menu and we're going to get back to this screen at one point but let's go down to that basic setting mode down at the bottom. So I'm just going to use the down arrows on the wheel here and go ahead and pick that and I'm going to enter basic setting mode. Now as far as configuring remote communications everything is done under the menu communication ethernet. So let's go over here and take a look at the most basic things that we need to set up. So the first thing we need to make sure is set up is an IP address. This is your network address that your MV Advanced is going to have on your network. So in this case I've set mine to 192.168.1.204 and I've set a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now in order to set these you're just going to go and hit the little uh, key below the uh, the input in the bottom left corner and that allows you to go in there and set the number so I've already set it but you can go ahead and set it to whatever you need to if, if you don't really know too much about IP addresses and so on you might want to talk to your IT administrator to get him to assign you some so you can place the uh, MV advanced on a network okay so everything's already set on here the one thing I'll say is whenever you're configuring stuff here is if you see the background in yellow that means the change is there but it's not committed to memory. To commit stuff to memory you have to hit your display enter key again and then that'll commit the change to memory. So I've already committed these changes to memory so I don't need to do it at this point and to back out of this, this screen you just hit the escape button. Okay so I've backed out of that screen. Next place I'm going to need to go to is server. So I go to server hit the display enter key and go down here and hit the little function key under use okay you need use for Modbus in order to allow Modbus communications to happen and then once again hit the display enter key to make sure that you've accepted that change and then I'm going to hit escape to back out uh, one other thing that you may want while you're in here if you haven't already configured it is to go to web page and uh, essentially to set your settings to this operator on and use this will allow you to then browse to the MV across your network by essentially going to your Internet Explorer or whatever you use for a web browser and uh, typing in uh, the IP address of the unit in this case uh, 
192, 168, 1204. And then if you want the full access to the display wheel and so on for navigating, you can type in uh, 192, 168, 1204, whatever your IP address is, and then a forward slash operator dot htm. That'll actually bring in up the operator screen so you can navigate uh, around the unit. So once again, if you need to, hit your display enter again to accept your changes here. Now let's get down to the actual Modbus configuration. So we go down here, hit the display enter key. And it's going to come up with three choices. So pick your basic setting. This is essentially how fast you're going to pull your remote I.O. So I recommend uh, uh, no faster than one second. That will usually work on most networks. Uh, if you're doing something slower like temperatures and you don't need updates all that fast, you can change this to a different pull rate. Okay, but right now I've got it set to one second. You can change it by essentially accessing the function keys below to uh, say if I wanted to change it to something like five seconds, I could do that. And uh, since I've made a change, see how it's in yellow? Hit the display enter to accept that change. So I'm going to change it back to one second now. Hit the display enter key to accept the change. Then I'm going to do escape to back out. Next place we're going to need to go is the Modbus server settings. So I'm going to hit the display enter key on that. And port 502, that's kind of a standard uh, port number for accessing uh, Modbus Ethernet protocol. Uh, think of a port number as a uh, doorway into the machine. The IP address is kind of like the street address. The port number is the doorway. So it's kind of the thing that MV Advanced is listening to for Modbus Ethernet communications. You might have heard of port 80. That's kind of what your computer listens to for stuff like web browser communication. So port 502 is standard for Modbus Ethernet protocol. If you need to change it for some reason due to security reasons, you got to have it changed on both devices. So say the MV Advanced in this case and the MW100 on the other end. Okay, This is the IP address of the MW100 or DAC Master. So this is the IP address of whatever remote device you're hoping to communicate via Modbus. Uh, the unit number is generally going to be fixed and one. Okay, so this is how I set these up. I rarely leave it on auto. Uh, this is a throwback to the old serial communications of Modbus, and uh, it allows you to essentially access subunits that may be off the same IP address. But in this case, there are no subunits or anything like that. So we can just go with fixed and number one. And then I'm going to hit uh, display enter to accept my choices and escape to back out of here. Next place I'm going to go is command settings. Now this is where things get interesting. You've got some different choices of doing Modbus communications. You've got uh, off, which is essentially you're not going to be doing any communications. You've got read to math. Okay, This will uh, essentially allow you to read to some communication channels. And these communication channels, I'll show you later on, can be dropped in math. If you have the MC1 option, you're going to see a different read option that essentially allows you to read into those extended channels that I talked about. Uh, in this case, the MV Advance does not have the MC1 option, so it doesn't have those extended 240 channels of communications. So as far as communicating goes, whenever you talk about reading from a remote device, you're going to be reading what's called registers. And if you take a look over here, you're going to see under the registers column, you're going to see this 31001. This 31001 is going to be detailed in whatever communications manual you have for your remote device. So if you have an MW100 or a PR300 or some other type of Modbus power meter, in its communications manual it's going to detail all the different registers. So in this case, in the MW100 communications manual, the Modbus registers for its uh, primary input channels, the floating point versions of those, start at channel 31001. And essentially it takes up two registers for every uh, item or channel. And in this case, uh, 31001, 31002, those would be used up to bring in the first input channel as a floating point. 
the same input channels are available as uh, essentially uh, double words so uh, kind of double integer type data uh, but in this case I'm just going to bring them in as floating point that's essentially uh, decimalized type data all right and uh, the other thing that you're going to be interested in is what type of data type it is so in this case the register 31001 is a floating point type of data so you're going to have to make sure that you pick the appropriate type of data server this just goes back to that previous screen that we configured the first server uh, and only server we've configured was the MW100 remember the port 502 and the IP address well beside that entry was its server number and then going back here this is interesting if I just went C1 to C1 that would mean only read in one floating point piece of information starting at this register but notice how I've done kind of a extension here of C1 through C4 well what I'm saying here is go ahead and read in four points of data so starting at register 31001 I'm going to do what's called a block read where I'm reading in four contiguous points of data so because uh, it knows to start at 31001 it knows the register type is float L it's essentially going to go in groups of two and read in the entire uh, block of four points of data so essentially I'm bringing in uh, four IO points straight off the MW100 starting at the very first uh, data point here so that's kind of what you need to know on this page here so when you're done configuring it you can go ahead and uh, just hit your display enter key to accept your changes if you want to read in other chunks of data you can do the same thing here go ahead do the read math you can go ahead and pick different communication channels so you've already used up C1 through C4 so you might want to go ahead and input and go something like this use your uh, display wheel and go ahead C5 and in that case see how it automatically did C5 well I can make it a block read by extending it to say C8 or C10 but in this case I'll just leave it as one point of data and uh, let me uh, I kind of uh, prematurely accepted that change so I can kind of go over here and say well I want to change that to register uh, 30,000 say 9 and I want to change that hit the next key and I want to pick floating point L okay and then hit display enter to accept that change so what I've done is I've done a block read in the first that brings in four points of data and then I've just done a regular read that's only bringing in one point of data starting at register 30,009 all right and then if you want to ever get rid of something you just go down to it and pick uh, off and that'll get rid of it okay so we've done our Modbus here now let me hit escape and I'm going to hit escape again escape again and I'm going to go down to the end key here and hit display enter and yes I'm going to save those changes so I've gone ahead and set up my four points of data now now that I've actually set them up I've got to go ahead and configure them here so I'm going to hit the menu key and I'm going to go down to math channel here and I'm going to go calculation expression alarm and essentially I have to now land those communication channels remember I read C1 through C4 so essentially starting at my first math channel and if you're already using your first math channel for something else just go to an unused math channel turn it on and then go in here and input what communication channel you want to land so in this case you're gonna to have to press the two key a couple times to get C and then set it to one so C1 in this case and then you're gonna set your span lower and upper this is essentially kind of your lower and upper bounds on your bar graphs and trends and stuff like that I just stuck with the default here you could then go ahead and put in your unit so say it's temperature you could go ahead and put your degrees Fahrenheit or whatever you wanted here so I could go ahead hit the input key 
and then under the AA1 type you can hit the function key below that and you can kind of switch between what type of different letters you want to do and then you could go ahead and put in your degree F if you wanted to so I could then go D use the arrow over key I could go E and then I could go ahead and uh, put in G degree and then hit the display enter key you could set up alarms if you want and then you're just gonna go ahead and accept your same changes by hitting the display enter key and then you can go and hit the uh, key underneath plus one and that'll move you to channel 102 go ahead put in C2 if you wanted 103 put in C3 104 put in C4 and then so on until you've essentially landed all your communication channels now once you've done that hit display enter to accept your changes you can hit escape to back out if you want you can go ahead and name your stuff under here so you could go ahead and name all your channels by putting in the appropriate characters I'm not gonna bother with this at that point um, the other thing that you're gonna need to do is go down here and go to your group set once you've set up all your math channels, you're going to go ahead and want to put them in a group. So in this case, I've gone ahead and built a group, and you can kind of see I put in the 101, 102, 103, 104 as my group. And then hit Display Enter to accept that change. Okay, hit Escape to back out. Escape to back out again. And we can see here, I'm actually looking at group one here. And one thing you're going to notice is that temperature is not actually changing there and the reason it's not changing is because I haven't started my math or recording yet so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button now or the start stop button in your case so there we go I've got the start and we can now kinda of see that it's up it's running and that 78.73 you can see how it's kinda of moving around a little bit that means that I'm going off I'm grabbing it now it means that it's pulling that data directly from the MW100. So essentially that's how you do some basic Modbus communications type setup on the MV Advanced going directly to an MW100. There's a lot of other points you can pull off the MW100 or a PR300. Once again make sure that you consult their communications manual to see how their Modbus registers are laid out and what data type they are. So this is Andrew Brody from Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group. I hope this is helpful for you. Take care and have a great day.